Okay, guys. You ready? It is sketch writing time. Mary. Had. Her. Little. Lamb. Whose. Fleece. Was. White. As dead bodies. But can we write a sketch about that? Uh, yes. You know what? No, it's been done before. Yeah, SNL did that last week. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. Kristen Wiig's great. Uh, Kate, open the door. Eddie Malden? Yes? I'm here to present you with a very expensive sexual harassment lawsuit. What? I haven't sexually harassed anybody. <laughs> Except for the 241 women who are suing you, you have a week to come up with the money. Kate, you, you speak woman. How do I get these bitches off my back? Well, you can either pay them the money you owe them, or you can write them with a sincere apology and beg for forgiveness. Okay, guys. How are we going to raise this money? <gasps> Welcome to Off The Wire, the University of Miami's social experiment in late night comedy, mixed with a natural college immaturity. Tonight's guest, Pulitzer Prize winning author Dave Barry. And here's your host, Eddie Martin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Off the Wire. I'm your host for this evening, Eddie Malden. We've got a very special episode tonight. I'm being sued for sexual harassment several hundred times. So, in order to raise the money, we've resorted to the oldest cable money making trick in the book a telethon. Uh, we've got the Off the Wire band, band standing by the phones. Uh, sorry, guys, we had to sell the instruments. Yeah, it's okay, Eddie. We got this magical little device that uh, does all the music for us. It's called an e-pod, apparently. Oh, fantastic. Well, we got to get things rolling. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, how are you guys doing? Audience, you doing good? Yeah? Yeah? Sounds good. You guys have a good 420? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, nice. For anyone who doesn't know, 420 is a holiday where stoners all across the globe do the exact same thing they do every other day of the year. Smoke weed. That's it. Just do something. I want them to like have a parade. I don't know. Eat the floats. That'd be funny. <laughs> Speaking of the munchies, the Department of Transportation has decided not to enforce a policy that would ban peanuts on airplanes for allergic reasons, I guess. This is a big win for peanut advocates and the gay community who completely misunderstood the bill. <laughs> Nuts. A study by health.com has found that sleeping on your back was the healthiest position for sleeping and that sleeping on your stomach was bad for maintaining perky breasts. When asked if this part of the study was necessary, the scientist replied, absolutely. <laughs> well, we can't blame them. Oh, well. Police in Texas are investigating an incident where a kindergartner brought a loaded gun to school. I don't know what's more disturbing that this Texas kid was in kindergarten or that the police forgot it was bring your gun to school day. <laughs> Those Texans. Cast members from the classic TV show Happy Days are suing CBS, claiming they're not being paid for merchandising revenues. Products they want to cash in on include the Happy Days lunchbox, the Potsy Weber line of cookware, and Ralph Mouth oral laxatives. It's a big seller. In other news, a 16-year-old girl survived the 220-foot fall from the Golden Gate Bridge on Sunday. This marks the second time in two months that a teenager has survived the fall, which is pretty weird. Um, authorities weren't sure if the girl was a witch, so they pushed her off again just to be sure. <laughs> She's a witch. <laughs> Homeland Security is updating their terrorism alert system, opting for something a little more descriptive than the previous color-coded system. Apparently, they want to make sure people can understand, not just third graders and George W. Bush. <laughs> Pretty color. We're working on it. In other political news, a former aide of Sarah Palin is publishing a tell-all book about the former Alaskan governor entitled Blind Allegiance to Sarah Palin. 
Other possible titles for the book include These Boots Are Made For la Laughing <laughs> or Lying and <coughs> Bitch. <laughs> Nailed that one. A woman in California can wiggle her right hand after a successful hand transplant. When asked if she'd ever be able to walk again, the reporter was told to please pay attention. <laughs> Got an amazing show for you guys tonight. Uh, Pulitzer Prize winning author Dave Barry is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get him on before he realizes this isn't 60 minutes. We'll be right back with more Off the Wire and the Off the Wire Telethon, everybody. Yeah. A little light clap. Go clap. Welcome back, everybody. Now, if you're just tuning in or deciding to pay attention, got a little situation on our hands. And that's that I'm being sued for sexual harassment. A lot. And we had to spend this whole week trying to raise the money. It wasn't easy. We've had to put a lot of work in. Uh, the first thing we tried to do was have a yard sale. Uh, we kind of hit a snag when I realized it was a lot harder to sell my action figures than I anticipated. <laughs> when that didn't work, we had a bake sale, but nobody really showed up. Yeah, kind of a bummer. But uh, we, then we decided to have a bake sale, uh, which had a line of people stretching around the block. <laughs> Everyone figured out pretty quick that we just put quotations around the original sign, so they lost interest immediately. Yeah, our next idea was to combine two of our other ideas, donating sperm and robbing a bank. No, we didn't rob a bank while masturbating, though that was Johnzo's idea. What can I say, man? I think outside the box. Yeah, no. We decided uh, to do something a little different. We decided to rob a sperm bank, then donate it back. The problem was, we were a little over their limit for donations. <laughs> yeah, didn't like that. So when selling things and uh, stealing things didn't seem to be working, we decided to think outside the box. No, not Johnzo's box. We had a car wash. <laughs> However, uh, we found out escorts are way more expensive than we expected. And despite everything I learned from Mel Gibson, they really don't like being called sugar not surprisingly, this resulted in way more lawsuits. So at this point, we've lost a lot of money. We were starting to get desperate, and we decided to hold someone ransom. Now, this is a lot harder than it sounds. We actually did this several times, but after no one would pay for Kathy Griffin or the entire Cleveland Cavaliers, we decided to aim a little higher. That's right, we kidnapped some kids. No, sounds kind of harsh. Uh, we got caught pretty quick, however. I think it had something to do with our ransom note. No cops. We were clearly having some trouble getting money at this point, and it was because we were getting too complicated. We had to think simple. We only had a few days left, so we decided to make a romantic comedy featuring Matthew McConaughey and Rachel McAdams. However, we had script problems from day one, and you know, <laughs> didn't work out, but you know, a boy can dream. When all that didn't work, we had to resort to this telethon, which has so far raised, well, People keep calling in, but it's mostly more sexual harassment lawsuits. We owe even more money now. Damn. <laughs> Don't worry. We've got one more idea, guys. We decided to put out a CD to raise money, so why don't you check it out? It's so hot out. I know. I wish there was something we could do to cool down. Well, there is. What? With the Off the Wire Christmas album. So sleek and sexy. I know. I want to put it in my mouth. No! With the Off The Wire Christmas album, you listen to it. The Off The Wire Christmas album contains over 400 tracks, most of which contain the Off The Wire cast singing your favorite Christmas and 80s hits the way they were meant to be heard without breaking copyright laws. Quiet night. It's totally night. I really can't stay. Oh, baby, it's chilly outside. I have to go home. Well, that door's locked from the outside. Frosty, da, 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 da. He's got three buttons on his chest, but he doesn't have a sleeve. Rocking around the Kwanzaa tree. I don't know what the holiday is. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell, c***. We're not gonna break it. 
No, we ain't gonna break it. My mom got that in Italy, she'll be pissed. Also, if you call now, you'll get the Off The Wire Crew Does Halloween songs. All 400 of your favorite Halloween tracks. Like Monster Smash. He did the smash. He did the Monster Smash. The Monster Smash. It was a graveyard bag. Wow. Wow. So call 1-800-SAVE-EDDIE and get your copy of the Off The Wire Christmas album and Off The Wire does those Halloween hits today. Also be on the lookout for our new albums coming soon, Off The Wire covers share and whale sounds and Off The Wire goes gospel. For those of you just tuning in, I'm facing a $638 million sexual harassment lawsuit. And here I have the lawyer suing me. Susan B. Anthony, everybody. Don't touch me. OK. Um, so Susan, please tell me, wh what did I do wrong? Because I honestly still don't know. You sexually harassed 241 women, and I'm just getting them their money. But I don't remember sexually harassing any women. I love women. They smell nice. November 2010. You asked a woman, would you like me to stuff your turkey? I was working at a grocery store at the time. Where? In your own perverted mind? No, in Coral Gables. You want me to tell you oral fables? Well, no stories for you, you sick pervert. I also have reports that in 1998, you asked a woman for some of that sweet, sweet stuff. I was probably asking for, I don't know, candy? I don't know. I wasn't hitting on her. <laughs> Last month at the Grove, you asked a girl if you could get up in them guts. That one was harassment. I apologize for that. <laughs> and don't forget the article you tried to publish in Science Weekly entitled, Women in Space, The Final Frontier. I'm sorry. I just don't think women should be allowed in space. It's for their health. There's no gravity up there. Where are their periods going to go? Up? <laughs> Down? Up again? <laughs> I thought you might be difficult. Let's see if you can keep up your facade when you're actually faced with some of your victims. Uh, Julie? Yeah, what's up? Um, who's this? Another woman you sexually harassed. Now, Julie, tell us all what Eddie did to you. Oh, that's Eddie Mormon, right? It's pronounced Malden. Oh, whatever, my bad. Uh, I'm still gonna get money from this guy, right? <laughs> of course he can. You're looking at 1.5 million for having Eddie question your identity as a strong, independent woman. Cool, I'll take it. Wait. Do I seriously owe her another $1.5 million? Make it 2.5 for questioning my intelligence as a woman. Damn it. Sucks. <laughs> Looks like I've got the upper hand now, Eddie. And while I'm power crazed on estrogen, I've brought along another woman to expose you for the monster you are. Come on out, Chazelle. What's up, you boo munchkin? What? That's just my brother in a wig. How dare you question this powerful woman's sexuality? Yeah, you Freaking butt dumpling. I totally am a woman with some nice biceps. <laughs> All right, now Giselle, can you possibly tell us what Eddie did to you? Yeah, like this one time he like totally touched my butt. What? Why would I want to touch my brother's butt? It's covered in hair. Hey, it's normal for a guy my age. God. You're so brave. Hey, when am I going to get paid for this? Because I totally got to take out my girlfriend. We're going to go see Scream 4, and I'm going to make out with her teeth and stuff. I'll have your nine million shortly. Oh, bitchin'. All right, see you later, bro. I mean, bro. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have a line of women outside waiting to give me their testimonies. <laughs> Good luck raising the money. You're going to need it. Susan B. Anthony, everybody. Hi, I'm Susan B. Anthony. No, not the hot sauce tycoon, the lawyer. Have you been sexually harassed by this man? Well, you're not alone. Hundreds of women have been sexually assaulted by this power-hungry pervert. And I am here to fight for you. Has he touched you? Talked to you? Asked you over to his house to watch children's cartoons? Verbally harassed you? Sexually harassed you? Telepathically harass you. Telepathically harass a dead relative of yours. Been near you. Seen you in a Chinese restaurant. Seen a friend of yours in a Chinese restaurant. 
Are some of the letters in his name the same as some of the letters in yours? Has he just touched you? Well then, I'll take your case. So call me Susan B. Anthony, and I'll get you the money you deserve. And some of the money you don't deserve. Seriously, we're talking borderline illegal. So call now. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, now for the moment you've all been waiting for, please join me in welcoming the one, the only, Dave Barry. Hi, Dave. Hi, thanks Eddie. so much for coming on. Uh, thanks for having me on. How come their phones are all facing out? We don't really know how to work. Okay, just you know, landlines. It's all about cell phones. I don't know. Uh, maybe there's some. See that real. Yeah. yeah, they're totally phones. They are. We they are real. They're they real. Oh, well, thanks so much for coming on, Dave. Thanks You're for like having me on, and congrats on the lost lawsuit. Oh, the lawsuits. I'm, I'm doing well, you know. I'm doing well. So last year was the murder charge. Now it's harassment. I'm down. Going down the ladder, I guess. Or not. I don't know. Um, but thanks so much for coming out, man. You're like a huge celebrity around Miami. You not, like not really. This is probably about as, as far as I'll go. <laughs> um, Once you but win it's the great to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, no, like, this is huge for me. This really is. That, that's great. I've been on the show a few times, and um, yeah, and it's really uh, it's it's not changed at all. It's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the, still got the we got the background the little picture of Miami out here. Oh, that's a window. No, yeah, that's yeah. totally a window. Like we a little it. little window. Yeah, yeah it's just no, that's cool. You can move it. You should that's have like the window. Grand Canyon or something. Something like yeah. that. <laughs> We're progressing. No, that's good. But yeah. uh. No, you, you're doing great stuff. Now, you used to write for the Miami Herald. I did. I, I don't write that for them very often anymore. Now, now please explain to our viewers, what exactly is a newspaper? Yeah, it's like hard to get across to college students nowadays. Um, there used to be these things that would come out every day, and they were, they were made of paper. If you can, yeah. And, hmm. you, and people read them. Um, and then I don't know what happened. Um, but... <laughs> Nobody does anymore. So that's kind of when I stopped writing for them. And now you're writing books, and uh, you wrote you wrote a book, and then they turn into a film. You're I did, guy. yeah, I did. No, I yeah, I've, I I wrote a, a book called uh, Big Trouble that was set in Miami. I love Miami. I I, I moved here, moved here in 1986 from the United States, and <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the city, and it's an endless source of of material here. in, in my, I mean, I I don't want. Uh, I'll just give you an example of something that I don't believe would happen in any other city. You may have read, this was in the Miami Herald, and if anybody read it, they would have read it, was on the front page. These like guys. Maybe your mom read it, maybe. Maybe your mom. Maybe. Yeah. And she's our subscriber. Um, <laughs> but there were these homeless guys fishing in Biscayne Bay. Okay. They catch an, a, a nurse shark, a six foot nurse shark, and they wanted to sell it to fish wholesalers on the Miami River. This really did happen, but they didn't have a car. They need to get from the Mi from Biscayne Bay to the Miami River, so they took public transportation. <laughs> they got on the the people mover, the thing that goes around down uh. to, with a, with a shark, which was not dead at that moment. <laughs> it was all, it was not doing well because the people mover isn't really a marine environment, you know. But it, <laughs> but it was still alive. So and I found about it. A, a person got on the and took a, she took a commuter got on and saw the shark. And even though she's lived in Miami for a number of years, this was shocking to her. And she took a picture and emailed it to me and said there's a live shark, on, live shark. on the people. So we could have had a situation in Miami where people, commuters were attacked by a shark. On a bus. Tragically, it didn't happen because that would have been, been the hilarious. best story ever. But that's why I love Miami. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, only stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that's their logic. Did you oh, yeah, they, it would not happen in Cleveland. No, no. no. They'd still be talking about it if it did. And like, Miami is like, you guys didn't even know it happened, but it really did. Like, did you they read the newspaper, goddammit. Uh, you would know that. It's all about tweeting. It was the, in there. The uh, interwebs and the, the, new, yeah. the television box. Yeah. Whatever that is. Um, you kids with your backwards phones. <laughs> <laughs> your rock music. Yeah. All right, yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll be back uh, with more uh, Dave Barry. No, that's all I got. That's all, yeah. all right. We will not be back with yeah. more Dave Barry. Hey, everyone. It's me, Mystery Off the Wire staff member. I'm here at Comic-Con to talk to some pale kids. Why the hidden identity, you ask? I learned my lesson from Iron Man. Once you reveal your identity, you have a horrible sequel. I don't know if you've heard of me, I am the do-gooder. What kid? Kind kid. Kind kid. Kind kid. 
I kill them with kindness. I'm a new superhero, up and coming. My name is Busboy. I have the power of Bacne. My powers include talking to women and holding in my bowels. Well, not really. I just sort of like overwhelm them with kindness and then they just feel really guilty and awkward about being criminals. Would you have any advice for me as far as powers, uh, outfit? Um, invisibility. I, invisibility. I, how would I... I was wondering if you could help me out, if you had any tips for me. Kill your enemies. I'm, I'm the do-gooder. The do-gooder? Never? Nothing? Nope, no. <laughs> do-gooder. He's the man, gonna do the goodest good, as good as he can. Nothing? No, no, but it's a very catchy theme. Very Criminals, catchy. you better beware, cause a do-gooder likes things that are good and fair. Nothing? No, no. Hobby? None. Favorite band? None. TV show? None. Newspaper? What? What What's kinds of superhero? All right, I don't exactly have a power yet. I stand in front of a microwave every day for a couple of hours, and uh, so far I just ejaculate blood. So in other words, what you're trying to do is you're trying to intake all the microwave radiation, hoping that it's Get going something. To, there you go. Okay. I haven't gotten much. Your microwave man. So like this mm -hmm. is going to be your perfect pose. You got it? Just like that. Where is a good place to set up a superhero headquarters? Well, probably, you know, somewhere abandoned or like Alaska. No. Really, really, really tall trees with like crazy secret laboratories in the trunks. I'm terrified of heights. Then you're gonna have to go underground and do a volcano. Yeah. I'm terrified of dirt. Um, well, yeah. Get a mansion and then set it up in your mansion. What about my mother's basement? When do I stop? <laughs> Did you stop? Oh, you stopped. Okay. I stopped. I stopped okay. A while I ago. closest comic book shop would be the best place. Nobody would expect it. <laughs> yeah. Or go in. You've been through a lot, saving Jedi and the galaxy and stuff. What brings you here today? Hot bitches. With, uh, with Fred. Yeah. You're still doing your thing. Oh yeah, I'm still doing my thing. So I'm gonna. Where is the rest of the team right now? Uh, well, da Daphne's uh, gonna be here tomorrow, and the rest of them are with us. The rest of them have jobs. I see you've stuffed Scooby. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why? Was it his time or? Uh yeah, he just he 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 just wouldn't listen no more. So I, you know, it was awful. <laughs> He never really did get English, so if you can't teach a dog. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 that broken English was driving me nuts, so he had to so get he just ended it. Yeah, oh yeah. And then what? There's no way, I don't believe that for a second. Where did we buy this? Well, it's a couple places. Um, the pants, I got it from my friend. The shrug, I got it from Evan's or mom. The mask, I got it from another convention a couple years back. So no gap? Nothing from the gap in your wardrobe? Nope, no gap. There is a table with all of what our members have made over there. And Someone made that harp? No, I think the harp was purchased, but it is, someone plays the harp. What game are we playing here in the game room? We are playing um, Yu-Gi-Oh. How long have you guys been playing? Um, I've been playing for about seven years. Today, oh, today? this no. game, this is a game though, right? This it is a game, yes. Why are there so many people void of smiles then? Can you count cards in this game? Uh, not really, it's kind of hard. He's got a pair of aces. Watch out. You guys had any, had any advice for me? I think you should save the world and save all the lovely children that need your help. Why should you be good? There's no fun in being good. There's a lot of youth out there that are trouble and that they're lost, and I think that should be your main focus. It's funner to be bad. She's stronger than me. I mean, I have ninja fighting powers, but I mean, she doesn't. But she could just control me to do whatever she wants me to. Kinky. Uh, today was interesting. I saw a lot of sweaty people and sarcastic t-shirts. I think I'm gonna go back in time, though, and tell myself never to come to Comic-Con. See you guys later. bathroom by accident and I saw a penis. <laughs> Alright everybody, I'm back with Dave Barry, Pulitzer Prize winning author. Do you ever get sick of that? Do you ever get sick of the Pulitzer Prize winning Here's thing? a little tip that uh, you might, those of you in the School of Communications or Journalism might be interested in. 
No one ever checks to see if you really did win a Pulitzer Prize. You could just <laughs> say you did, and no one will ever question it. I, I tried that with a Fields Medal once. They checked that out. <laughs> Nothing doing. But uh, earlier we were talking about like technology and stuff like that. You grew up in a different time. I grew up. I'm so old. I'm really old, and we didn't we didn't have any technology. We didn't have anything like this when when I was a I was a college student. No rooms. Nothing. Anything. Nothing. We didn't have. A, I was um, in college in the 60s, and, and we just had drugs. That's all. <laughs> but we, you know, we didn't have. You have a television set. We didn't. We had. We had magnetism. That was a big deal for us. Whoa, <laughs> magnets. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, and you have all this stuff, but nobody, no, not one human being knows how it works. Any of it. Does anybody really know? I mean, like your I cell phone. How the hell does it even? I think there's where, one there's, guy. You, where you could be anywhere. And it will ring. How the hell does it know where you are? That's what, think about that. I think it's just one dude out there. No, like, there's no dude. no dude. No, it comes from China, but they don't know how to do it works. And I know this for a fact because I've been to China and they don't even know how to make a toilet. It, seriously. Really? In China, the toilet is what we would call a hole that someone should put a toilet on. Um, so I don't think they're making. I don't think they're making cell phones um, <laughs> over there. Now, do you think kids these days, do you think they're spoiled? Do you think we're missing out on? You kids today <laughs> with your ties. <laughs> it's a clip on. On your, you know, your things. Yeah, I, no, you know, everybody thinks that the whatever generation came after him yeah. is spoiled. So, of course, I, but I mean, I'd rather, you know, have all the stuff we have now than not have all the stuff we have now. Cell phones and the, you know, like the internet. When I was a kid, we had rocks. We threw rocks. We go ahead and throw some rocks. You know, <laughs> that's what we did. And slinkies. That's all we you had need. We, I don't know if you ever probably never you know, anybody had a slinky. They didn't work on the commercial, which were filmed. It was filmed on a, a planet with way more gravity than the United. <laughs> that, would, that would go down the stairs. But if you have ever had a slinky, it doesn't. It goes like about and then it falls over. It needs some kind of like slinky via Viagra or something to make it <laughs> to make it actually work to go down. They don't work. Yeah. So we had a wheel. We had a thing called the wheelo. You ever hear of the wheelo? The wheelo. Look it up. Look up the wheel. That was a big toy. That was magnetism. <laughs> it was, well, you just do like this little just wheel. Just give kids thing. magnets. That's, that was that's what we had. We had the magnet. And I said, go play with the magnet. Go throw, throw some rocks at your magnet now. <laughs> you know, that was our child. We had miserable childhoods. But you know what? Damn it, we won World War II. God <laughs> damn it. No, actually, yes. that was actually that was. No, that was actually not my generation. <laughs> <laughs> my, generation. My generation didn't do crap. We had like our idea of really a rugged thing would be like junior year abroad when I was, you know, a college student. You know, that's about it. And rocks. Rocks. <laughs> anyway, rocks and drugs. Yeah, we did. Well, I'm not going to get into that, but there were drugs. <laughs> we we yeah, we, that's one. We invented drugs. <laughs> I was there when that <laughs> happened in the '60s. I was there. Yeah, I saw it happen. It was a big day, I guess. You say, whoa, yeah. There it is. Hey, <laughs> this is more fun now. That's how, <laughs> kind of how we felt about college then, you know. Yeah. And you went to a small college. I went to a small to college. College, college. I went to Haverford College uh, in, in Pennsylvania, which, if you slurred it just right, sounds like Harvard. Harvard. <laughs> and our motto was, we never heard of you either. Uh, <laughs> it was small. And I played in a rock band there called, it was called the, uh, the Federal Duck. And we played mixed. And the reason we were called the Federal Duck is, one night there was a there's a duck pond at Haverford, and a s group of us had gathered, and these, this this posse of ducks or whatever you call it when there's a group of started walking toward us in a very kind of militaristic, aggressive fashion right at us. The ducks <laughs> in the moonlight can still see it in the moonlight. And somebody in our group became concerned that perhaps these ducks were working for the federal government. <laughs> I'm not. Why did we think that? Drugs. Drugs. That's, <laughs> one, Drugs. That's, that's what was going on. That situation. So that's a good name for the, for our band. <laughs> that's a nice know. one. Well, we knew which way to point a telephone. I'll tell you that. In our, in our right. band, well, how do they hold their guitars? Do you have the strings facing your bodies, yeah. guys? Which, yeah. you know, uh, oh, they don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Dave, thanks so much for coming by. Dave, I Barry, think we, everybody. We've accomplished a lot here. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Broke some, broke down some walls. Yeah. You know, done a lot. Thank you. Uh, so I guess that's it for tonight, guys. How are we doing uh, on the phones? No calls? Nothing? It's been, uh, it's been kind of nope. slow, Eddie. Yeah. All right, well. Oh, oh, oh. Hello? 
So who who is this? It's Eddie. It's some guy named Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski, famous director of films such as Chinatown and Oliver Twist. Hello, Mr. Polanski. Um, well, yes, of course we. Ten million dollars? Eddie he wants to donate ten million dollars. That's great. It's a little shy, but I guess ten. Hello, million. Woody Allen, star of the classic Hollywood film Ants. <laughs> One hundred million dollars. Thanks. Yeah, matzah is a little chalky. I agree. Okay, bye. Hello, hello. Oh my God! Thirteen-time NBA All-Star and fifty percent of the Shaq and Kobe duo, Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Hi. You want to donate five million dollars? Of course. Eddie, five million dollars. That's amazing. Give me a seat. Hello. R and B sensation R. Kelly. <laughs> yeah, Eddie's totally a fourteen-year-old girl. Nine million. That's awesome. Thank you. I don't think we should take his money, <laughs> but Eddie, Eddie, Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas is on the line. He says they're throwing the case. He's yeah. saying a lack of evidence. <laughs> it's over, Eddie. We did we it, won. Eddie. We did it. We won the case. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Throw the confetti, guys. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, don't forget to check us out at umtv.miami.edu. You can also check out our episodes as well as UMTV's other great shows. Special thanks to Manny's formal wear, wear for this uh, great suit. Uh, yeah, good night, everybody. Dave Barry again. Yeah. We are not cleaning this up. <laughs> <laughs>